with his last stroke, Azaghal drove a knife into his belly and so wounded him that he fled the field. Today, we narrate the life and story of Azaghal, the Lord of Belegost. The date of Azaghal's birth is not known, but it is recorded that he has already been born by around 260 of the first age, when the first information of him can be found. He is most certainly not of the long beards, the dwarfs who descend from Durin and are most friendly to the elves, as dwarfs of this clan never dwelt in the realms of Beleriand. This means that Azakhal is either of the Broadbeams or of the Firebeards, the dwarven clans that build the cities of the dwarves in the eastern mountains of Beleriand. Azakhal's name is one of the few Kuzdul names recorded in the tales of Farda. Its meaning is unclear, but it could probably be of the same root as the word Azog or the Adunaic word Asgara. If this is the case, then Azakhal could mean warrior. Azakhal is the lord of the dwarven city of Belegost, which lies in the north-central part of the Blue Mountains, in the far west of Middle-earth. Around the year of 260 of the First Age, the dwarf Telhar, one of the greatest myths in the history of Middle-earth, craft for Azakhal the dragon helm of Dor Lomin, the dragon helm of Dor Lomin here reappears on the Lay of the Children of Hurin, where in the second version it is said that it was the work of Telhar. In the Nar Nihin Hurin, it is told that Telhar made it for Azakhal of Belegost. This helm is made of grey steel adorned with gold, and upon its crest is set in defiance an image of Glaurung the father of dragons. One day, while Azakhal is traveling on the dwarf road in East Beleriand, he is waylaid by orcs, but Maedros, the eldest son of Feanor, saves Azakhal's life from the ambush of the orcs. Out of gratitude and as a reward for rescuing him, Azakhal awards the elf lord with his helm, the dragon helm of Dor Lomin. It was given by Azakhal to Maedros as guerdon for the saving of his life and treasure when Azakhal was waylaid by orcs upon the dwarf road in East Beleriand. In 468 of the First Age, in order to raise the fortunes of the Eldar against Morgoth, Maedros decides to unite as many of his allies as he is able to, with the intention of assailing Kangband, the fortress of the Dark Lord. Azakhal and his dwarves of Belegost join the union of Maedros and fight in the Battle of the Near Arnoidiad in the eastern host of the Union. After the battle goes sealed for Morgoth, he unleashes his last strength upon the forces of the Union. There came wolves and wolf riders, and there came Balrogs and dragons, and Glaurung, father of dragons. The strength and terror of the Great Worm were now great indeed, and elves and men withered before him. In the end, the Easterlings who are fighting alongside Azakhal and Maedros betray them, and the Eastern host is assailed on three sides. Many of the Dwarves and Elves manage to escape far away, towards the mountains in the east, but Azakhal and his Dwarves fight valiantly. Last of all the Eastern force to stand firm were the Dwarves of Belegost, and thus they won renown, for the now Grim withstood fire more hardily than either elves or men, and it was their custom, moreover, to wear great masks in battle, hideous to look upon, and those stood them in good stead against the dragons, and but for them, Glaurung and his brood would have withered all that was left of the Noldor. Then Glaurung assails Azakhal and his dwarves, 
but they stand steadily against him. But the now green made a circle about him when he assailed them, and even his mighty armor was not foolproof against the blows of their great axes. At that moment, Azakhal, the lord of Belegost, resisting the great worm, folds gallantly, and when in his rage Glaurung turned and struck down Azakhal, lord of Belegost, and crawled over him, with his last stroke, Azakhal drove a knife into his belly, and so wounded him that he fled the field, and the beasts of Fangband in dismay followed after him. Had Azakhal but borne a sword, great woe would have been spared to the Noldor that after befell, but his knife went not deep enough. There Azakhal falls, during the year that is later called the Year of Lamentation. Then the dwarves raised up the body of Azakhal and bore it away, and with slow steps they walked behind, singing a dirge in deep voices, as it were a funeral pomp in their country, and gave no heed more to their foes, and none dared to stay them. Azakhal's brave deed is remembered and praised by Turin to Rambar some years later in the forest of Brethil. For I do not believe that this dragon is unconquerable, though he grows greater in strength and malice with the years. For hear now this tale that I was told by some that fought in the year of the Nirnaith, when I and most that hear me were children. In that field the dwarves withstood him and Azakhal of Belegost pricked him so deep that he fled back to Angband. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one on my Govanen. Namariel.